Welcome back to the Jordan Maxwell Show. You can find us on jordanmaxwellshow.com and make sure you like us on Facebook. We are the Jordan Maxwell Show, or you can follow us on Twitter at J Maxwell Show. You can also subscribe to the Jordan Maxwell Show on iTunes. And remember, it's free. There are lots of ways to find us, so please tell all of your friends about us. To be able to do a quality show, we need people to listen. So thank you for spreading the word. At the end of the last episode, we were talking about the Son of God, seasons, and how they relate to different religions around the world. So where should we pick up? Well, I think we should pick up the conversation and talk about Horus, the Sun God. Who or what was Horus? Uh, Horus was the name of the sun god in Egypt. The Egyptian priests would go out early morning, 4, 4.30 in the morning, and sit and face the rising of the sun. And so the sun, when it began to break the surface, that was their god. He is our risen savior. And so his name, they gave him the name of Horus, H-O-R-U-S, Horus. It was said that Horus walks across the sky in 12 equal steps. So when it first comes up in the morning, it's Horus of the first step. Then a little bit later, a little bit further up, it's Horus of the second step. Then Horus of the third step. And when it gets straight up over the sky, in the middle of the sky, overhead, he became known, Horus became known as the most high God. Why? Because it don't get any higher than high noon. And so the sun is now the most high. Of course it's most high. From here on out, it's going to go down again. So therefore, God's Son is the Most High at 12 noon. That's why, you know, he was in the temple teaching the wise men at 12, uh, 12 years old. No, no. The Son is in God's temple. The temple of the heavens is God's temple. And he's in the temple teaching the wise men at 12 noon. Because if you can't learn intelligence at 12 noon in the broad daylight, you're a real idiot. And so God's Son is in the temple teaching the wise men light, enlightening the human race at 12 noon. Then he begins to walk 12, you know, walk six more steps, and now he's leaving the world. And when he leaves the world, he's leaving the world in the hands of the prince of darkness. The evil one, the prince of darkness, is coming because God's son is leaving the world, and now he's going to have a ball the prince of darkness, because the God's son is leaving. So God's son is leaving the earth, the whole earth, in the hands of the prince of darkness. And in Egypt, the prince of darkness was called Set, S-E-T, Set. Why? Because they noticed it did get dark at sunset. Sunset. Right. <laughs> <laughs> pretty simple. Yeah, pretty simple. All makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and so, so therefore he is born... Uh, when he's born in the first born in the morning, he's a baby, the baby Horus, the baby Jesus. <clears throat> and then he walks across the sky in 12 steps. So they said 12 Horuses, H-O-R-U-S. No, we changed it. 12 hours. Exactly. H-O-R-U-S, Horus. No, H-O-U-R-S, hours. You just change the R to U to U and R because 12 hours. So now God's sun walked across the sky in 12 steps, <clears throat> and the sun represents light. He is the light of the world. Well, light in Latin is Lucius. Lucius, when it's personified into a person, Lucius is an idea. Light is an idea concept. But if you're going to make that concept into a person to worship, then, that name, then the name you would call Lucius or light would be Luke. Luke is Lucius in Latin. Lucius is light. Horus is the god of light. The god of light. Okay? So therefore, it's Luke Skywalker. He walks across the sky in 12 equal steps, and he meets Darth Vader, the prince of darkness. So the whole story of the Christian religion is the war between Horus and Set, <clears throat> between God's Son, the light of the world, our risen Savior who walks across the sky in 12 steps, who is the Savior of the world because he brings light and warmth and, and energy and all the wonderful things. And he's, you know, he, he, he takes care of everyone. He gives everyone energy and food. And so <clears throat> then he has to die. 
And when he dies, he's going to leave the whole world in the hands of the Prince of Darkness, Darth Vader, <clears throat> as because Luke Skywalker is gone now. So all I'm saying is that religion is it's a story, and it's a story of the war between light and darkness. Now, how do you understand all of this today correctly? Very simple. If you go back into, this is why the Bible is called the greatest story ever told, because it is the greatest story ever told. Why? Because it's the oldest story that's ever been told. The oldest story ever told on the earth was a war on earth between light and darkness. Twelve hours of light, twelve hours of darkness. The boogeyman comes out at night and is going to get you. And in the morning, thank God, God's son has risen and everything's going to be fine now. And he's come back to save us because he, he promised he would. And in spring, he does come back to the northern hemisphere because he promised he would return. Thank God he does because we freeze up here and we're not able to raise any crops or anything because everything's frozen solid. Religion is actually the worship of the sun. It goes all the way back to the ancient sun worship and moon worship. In the ancient Arabic world, the moon was called Sin. And that's where the Hebrews get the idea that their holy days are after sundown. Because uh, that's when the moon comes out. Another one of the ancient gods of the of the Hebrews, and they had quite a few ancient gods at different times in the history. <clears throat> when they were called Hyksos, the Hebrews, what we call today, Hebrews will call Hyksos in ancient Egypt. And at one time, the Hyksos were, uh, became involved when they left out of uh, Egypt and went north into Palestine they had already learned the worship of Isis in Egypt. Isis was feminine, the feminine perfection of spiritual wisdom. Isis, I-S-I-S. -S. Then with the coming of the new religion under Pharaoh Akhenaten, which was the worship of the sun, the sun was called Amun-Re, A-M-E-N, Amun-Ra. Amun-Ra, that's why to, the Christians still today are praying to God's son, the amen. light of the world, and they say at the amen. end of their prayer, Amen. Of course, it's Amen Ra, Amen Ray, Amen Son, Amen God's Son, Amen. But when the Hyksos people left out of Egypt, they had already learned the worship of Isis, I S I S. Then they had been under the Pharaoh Akhenaten learning the worship of Amun Ray, R A Ra, which is where we got our word Sun Ray. <clears throat> and then when they leave and go north into Palestine, they encountered a people called Palestinians, and those Palestinians already had their own God. They had their own religion, and that religion was the worship of the planet Saturn. Saturn was referred to in the ancient world as Lord of the Rings. Well, of course, Saturn is Lord of the Rings. Rings of Saturn. Well, Saturn. what significance right now in you know in the times that we see? Uh, well, we also know, see the we also see the Jews in Hollywood making Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Well, what about the the Gaza situation right now? And uh, yeah, I think a lot of this has to do with well, obviously it's religious based. Most uh, yeah, but it's all being manipulated purposely. That's why you see the head of the the head of Palestine and the head of Israel. My God, how many times have I seen pictures? of the head of Palestine and the head of the, of Israel, they're all shaking hands, having wine and shooting the breeze and smoking cigars together. And they're all patting each other on the back and they're all friends. It's just business. Nothing personal here, Sonny, it's just business. We're talking money, we're talking politics. Divide and conquer, Democrat, Republican. It's just business. You keep people occupied, cause problems. You cause all kinds of divisions so that there's, you know, if everybody's happy and just doing their, their thing, they're not going to listen to you. Who needs you to be over them? You need somebody like you to be over us, to protect us if we are in trouble. But as long as we're not in trouble, who the hell needs you? So therefore, the government makes sure that the people are always one step away from chaos. There's going to be bloody violence. Uh, starvation, all kinds of terrible well, things. It goes back to the fear. Fear is well, a course. massive power tool. I mean, look Absolutely. at the head of the Illuminati, and he discussed it. You know, tell people, uh, <laughs> you know, anything, and they're going to believe it. Precisely. That's what. That's what. Uh, can't remember the Nazi, the famous Nazi, uh, not not Goebbels. Yeah, Goebbels. Goebbels. He said, if you just tell a lie big enough, and they just keep telling them, eventually everybody's going to believe it. Oh, powerful propaganda. That's right. And remember, propaganda does not deceive you. Propaganda helps you to deceive yourself. Mm -hmm. 
because you have a brain and you don't listen to the propaganda. Go out and read a book and study and understand how the world works. And then you see the whole thing is all a bunch of bull, just all politics, money, corruption. The eagle only has two wings. I mean, and left wing is evil. And well, that's what the word in Latin, the word for left is sinister, right? So why did God put your, your, your heart on the left-hand side? Because that's the sinister side in Latin, sinister. And the sun is your solar plexus in the, in the center of your chest is a solar plexus. And your heart is on the sinister side, the left. And uh, I, I'm just saying, once you understand, this is why Jesus had uh, 12 apostles the sun has 12 helpers, the, the 12 signs of the zodiac, the 12 months of the year. Um, and once you understand Jesus is a symbol and a metaphor story and a symbolic story, everything begins to make sense. You know, he's, he's resurrected in spring. His, uh, his mother was a virgin, the 12 apostles. Uh, a lot of people are not aware of the fact that uh, in Rome, the ancient Roman Empire, there was a religion just before the advent of Christianity. There was a very powerful, dominating religion in, in, uh, in uh, the Roman Empire. It was called Mithraism. Mithra was the god of light. He was called God's son, the light of the world. He died on a cross. He was resurrected after three days. He had 12 apostles. His mother was a virgin. It's called Mithraism. Go through all the encyclopedia and look it up and read about Mithra. He was the he was out he was referred to as God's son, the light of the world. He was put to death on the cross. He was resurrected on the third day. Uh, all of this stuff is Mithraism. Then when Christianity comes along, um, it's a myth. It, yeah, just just keep everything the same. It's just a, it's like the same thing. The Sears moves into mm -hmm. uh, a business. We keep everybody on. Everybody stays in, uh, on a job. That's from here on out. I'm the boss. It's like Hollywood sequels. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just, <laughs> right. just yes, recycle the sequel. same stories. So it, it's just incredible when you understand how this religion works. And you know how many people go to church? How many people go to church and have no idea in the world what the word church means? It's an incredible story. People go to church, you spell church, C-H-U-R-C-H. -H. But church comes from a Scottish word, kirk, K-E-R-K -E or K-I-R-K, kirk. So if you're a Christian on Sunday morning in Scotland, you go to kirk. Or if you're in England, you go to church. Kirk is a Scottish word which can be traced back to because the Knights Templars, when they went on the Crusades for the papacy to the Middle East, they learned a lot of the religion of the Middle East and brought it back to Scotland. And so in the Middle East, there was a worship of a goddess. Her name was Circe, Circe, C-E-R-E-S, Circe or Circe. She was referred to in the ancient Middle East uh, especially with the uh, the uh, Phoenicians, Carthaginians, who were big in Carthage, uh, the worship of the of the Mother Circe, Mother Circe. Well, Mother Circe becomes Mother Kirk, and then later on becomes Mother Church. But Circe is the basis for Kirk, and Kirk is the basis for Church. So go back and look at this Mother Circe. And you will find in Greek mythology, she was able to hypnotize people and take their minds from them under hypnosis and bring them into her house and lock the door behind them and then magically take their minds from them and then eat them, feed off of them. That's Mother Circe or Mother Circe, Mother Kirk or Mother Church. And that's what Mother Church does. Well, that's what the church does. She brings in people, locks the door behind them, no reading of any books. We don't want to question nothing. We don't want to discuss nothing. Just do what you're told. Write a check and keep your mouth shut and send the church your money. So therefore, Mother Church, Mother Circe, Mother Kirk is, is living off of the people. 
I'm just amazed at how many people don't see this stuff. And, you know, and they will tell you, Christians will tell you, well, yeah, but, you know, we're supposed to give a tithing, which is 10% of our income. We give 10% of our income to the to the church, tithing to support the church. And I ask, and I say to people, do you know where tithing comes from? Have you ever looked in a book and read a book on what tithing is? Tithing is was not, had, then had nothing to do with giving 10% of your income. Tithing was very simple. The ancient Phoenician Canaanites and all the ancient people in the Middle East realized each year when you grow your plants and food, you save 10% of the seeds so you got something to plant next, next year, year to give it back to God, so to speak. Give it back to the universe. Put it back into the ground and water, and then you will have food for next year. And so the church comes along and says, no, oh, that's a great idea. I never thought about that. That's good. So why don't we get these? Why don't you get these goofballs, these airhead <laughs> misfits, goofballs who don't have brain one, have never read anything, and we just tell them that, that well, you have to give ten percent of your money to the church, right? Now, normally we were going to take fifty percent, but we only take ten percent unless, of course, you got some money and we we'll take twenty percent. Have I got a deal for you? Yeah, I got a deal <laughs> for you. I'm gonna let, <laughs> I'm gonna let this go for twenty nine ninety five. No ups and no downs. And uh, and so you find out that, no, religion is just a business. Come on. That's all it is. Just a business. It has nothing to do with anything spiritual. And anyone who has more than 500 brain cells all going in the same direction watches Christian television has to know this is the most hideous, most abominable, silly nonsense that people can be involved well, like, in. What gets me? I look at the private jets that these guys oh, are flying around. Oh, private jets and, and the... diamond rings yeah. and, and gay haircuts and and jumping around the stage with their you know with their Rolex watches and they're talking about the Lord Jesus and the Lord Jesus this and that, never realizing there is no Lord Jesus. There was no Jesus. It's just a story of the Son. The whole story of the Bible is astrology, period, end of sentence. I think people pretty well have suspected and pretty well know, but you know, but like I said, people don't like to be made fun of. They don't like to have uh, other people laughing at them. And so since everybody in town is going to church, if you don't go to church, they're gonna laugh at you and mock you. And so it, it might even affect your job. So you need to be at church. You need to just go along to get along. Just sit there and let them play guitars and sing songs and all of that. And you'll feel good and they'll feel good and everybody's happy. Right. So it's, in the, it's, a, it's a disgusting situation. And uh, we haven't even scraped the surface. That's why I'm just doing what I do. I'm just trying to awaken people to how ignorant, ill-informed, and unread the world really is. And so I'm just, I've always wanted to know what's behind the curtain. And so that's what I do. That's why I do what I do is I just want to make, I want to make knowledge available to those who want to hear. Most people don't want to hear, but for those individuals who do want to know, the, I want to be here to help them, to show them where to go for the information on how to figure out how this system started, what the symbols mean, how the government works, how things work. Because I'm telling you, nothing in this world works the way you think it does. And I mean nothing. Well, I, I like the way you're doing it, too. Uh, I like the way you're going to do it on this show. People that have followed you for a long time and things are going to be interesting for them. But hopefully uh, a lot of new people find you and really like what you're talking about and listen. Basically, what I want to do is I just want to enlighten people who want to know because most people don't care to know the truth until they get in trouble they don't want to know anything about the law you know even though the law says ignorance of the law is no excuse <laughs> well yeah but nobody cares about it it's not important uh, because it has nothing to do with basketball or paris hilton or anything now, once you're found guilty and going away for 25 years of life, you know, in prison, now all of a sudden it hits you of the system you're living under. Now what is going to happen to you? Because now how does this happen? What's going on? 
Well, it's a little late <laughs> yeah. for you to figure it out then. I wish I knew the law. <laughs> yeah, I wish I knew the law. And uh, and you said the wrong things in court, and that, that got you 25 years. When you walk into a courtroom, you see uh, the people are sitting out here in the audience, and then there's a fence and a gate, and then there's a judge and all the rest of the, the group inside. What do you think that, that fence is there for? What do you think that gate is there for? It's symbolism. The people who are sitting out here in the audience are called, that area in a courtroom is called the law of the land. Then there's a fence and a gate. On the top of the gate is a piece of wood, and that's called a bar. And so, but you're not, you're not licensed to pass the bar. Only the attorneys are licensed to pass the bar. And so when your name is called, you are passing the bar. You are, oh, when you put your hand on that gate, by law, when you put your hand on that gate and open the gate to go in, that gate is called a water gate. And uh, you have just now opened the water gate. The water gates are when you're going through the Panama Canal. They've got gates, and when the gates open, the ship rises. And so that's why in a courtroom, when they call your name, you open the gate, that's a water gate. Now you've opened yourself up to hot water. Now you're in hot water because you've opened yourself up to maritime admiralty law. Maritime admiralty is the law of water. Because the Romans, the ancient Romans said there was only two things on the earth, land and water. So there's only two kinds of law, the law of the land and the law of water. The law of the land was, of course, the law of the culture of the people who lived on a particular piece of land. But the law of the land is different in every country. You can do things in South Africa you can't do in Russia. You can do things in China you can't do in America because it's the law of the land. But there is a bigger and far more important law on the earth. And that is called the law of the high seas, the law of water. The law of water is the most powerful law on the earth. It's called maritime admiralty. That's why we say that money goes through your hands like water. No, maritime admiralty is the law of money, water. That's why it's the cash flow, the liquid asset. That's why you put it in a put your money in a bank because it's called a river bank. And as we said before, what does a river bank do? It directs the flow of the current sea. Because your money is a cash flow, it's currency. Let me give you an example. When a ship when a ship pulls into harbor, it comes in on water. Say eight hundred million dollars worth of Toyotas came in this morning at the harbor, and when it parks, it parks at the dock. All ships by law are female. Rocket ships, sailing ship, airships, it doesn't matter. If it's a ship, it's female. That's why you always, captains will always say, she's a very seaworthy, she's very this, she is this, and she's that. Because all ships by law are female. Why? Because she delivers the product. The airship, 747, de delivering a product. You. You paid $800 to go somewhere. That's a, We're talking business. You're transporting something. Yeah, transporting you. You're a product. The whole idea of, of the water, the, the law of water, is the law of money. So when you when you go through the the, the, the gates on the uh, on the Panama Canal, you're opening up the water gate. <clears throat> so when you're in court, they call your name and you put your hand on and you open the the gate. You're not licensed to pass the bar. Only attorneys are licensed to pass the bar. Therefore, when you walk past that gate in a courtroom, officially, the way it actually works, and you ask, ask any good lawyer that is intellectually honest and will tell you the truth, that when you walk in past that gate, you are officially, as far as the court is concerned, dead. You are a dead man. You do not exist. You died. And therefore, you cannot speak to the, the judge. Because why? Because dead people don't normally stand up and talk to you when you go visiting a cemetery. And so you have to have someone speak for you. So the attorney is your mouthpiece. He speaks for you. Why? Because in point of fact, lawfully, you are considered to be dead. You're finished. You're dead. 
and so he will speak for you. And because why? You're in hot water. And if he can't speak for you correctly, then somebody's going to have to bail you mm -hmm. out. That's what happens if your ship is going under. Yeah. It's taking on water. You're going under. So they're going to have to bail you out. And since your body is 90% water and you're a biological battery of water, they're going to, if you can't get bailed out, they're going to take your body, which is a bi biological battery, 90% water, and they're going to put you in a cell, like a battery, as a cell. So they're going to put you in a cell, and now your body, which is a biological battery, is in the cell. That's the electricity or energy. And that energy can now be sold to corporations that need the energy. They need the corporation energy so they can sell your body to corporations. So uh, Sears and General Motors, General Electric will buy your body uh, while you're in the cell. So your, your body, when you're in the cell, is making a lot of money for some people. They're buying your, you're buying your bond. And a lot of people do not know that your physical body is a security on the New York Stock Exchange. Well, that goes back to, uh, you know, that had to do, that transformed back in, was it 1913 and then 33 yeah, when we right. uh, uh, became surety when they formed the Department of Human Resources. And that's, that's right. Uh, each one of us is surety for the, uh, you know. Uh, for the what, body social. Correct. The body social. And, you know, the whole body, uh, like, like, for instance, um, if you're working for General Motors, well, General Motors is all over the damn earth. They're in India. So they're all over the earth. It doesn't matter. If you're working for General Motors, no matter what country, no matter where it is, then you are an employee of General Motors, period. Okay? So the entire company, no matter where it is, is one corporation, one company. And so in law, it's referred to, General Motors is referred to, and any big corporation is referred to as a body, social. It's a social body. It's called Ford Motor Company. It's made up of people. It's a social body. And so it's called body politics, the body social. And so when you, your body is worth like $6 million on the New York Stock Exchange, you don't know that. You're not supposed to know that your body is worth millions of dollars on the New York Stock Exchange, but it is. And therefore, your body is a security for the corporation called United States Company, the United States Corporation, and your security for that corporation. So when you retire, which means when you get off from work, you're leaving, you're retiring for the evening, or after 65 years, you're retiring you get uh, you get a, uh, a benefit of the money that you have been that's been used you know that the corporation has used you for all your life. They get the use of your body, which is worth money on the stock exchange, which you didn't know. So therefore, you get a dividend back for the for the use of your body, and it's called social security. No, no, your body is a security for the body social. Now they're giving you part of it back and they call it social security. So if you understand how this thing works, I'm not saying it's evil or bad. I'm just saying you need to understand how the world works. And, uh, you know, I, I've said, I've used this example before. If you have a two-story building and you're going to put a lot of weight on the second floor, think about it. First off, if you've got any brains at all, you go downstairs get a building inspector, get on a ladder, and go up through the ceiling tiles on the first floor and look at the foundation of the floor you're going to build on. Before you start putting heavy equipment like printing presses and everything on the second floor, you better find out the foundation is going to hold that kind of weight. So what you're doing is you're standing underneath of what you're going to build on. You're standing under the foundation, which is where we get our word understanding. Mm -hmm. So unless you can stand under the world you live on, then you don't understand. And so that's what I've been saying for years. Nobody seems to understand how the world works. Courts are just a game. It's a game. It's called the commerce game. And how do you play the commerce game? It's two teams. You play, you play tennis on a court. You play basketball on a court. 
It's a game. How do you play tennis on a court? You play with a racket. Come on. Understand how this stuff works. It's a racket. Complete and so, racket. Yeah, it's a big racket. It's a basketball. It's tennis. It's a game. Uh, any game, you're going to have to have uh, a referee. So the judge is a referee. When the judge walks out, everyone rises. The same thing was when a Catholic priest walks out, everyone rises. It's just a game. It's called maritime admiralty, the law of water. All of this is just a beginning of the things I want to talk about. There's so much more we could talk about in the future. There's just well, that's the the cornerstone to the show. We'll uh, we'll segue into a different subject matter. And, oh uh, God, yeah, there's yeah. so many of them. Everything that you've talked about that you've hit on here, you could have so many shows on them. Oh God, yeah, <laughs> religion, that's politics, great. commerce mythology religion uh, mythology well, saturn alone with the saturn judge, the alone judge is wearing the hours. robe and the priest and the yeah. all of this stuff is fascinating when you begin to really understand what you're doing in this life what is really going on so um, you know I, my feeling is if you you need to wake up and and realize that the world is not what you thought it was nothing works the way you think it does you've been you need to educate yourself Yep. You need to have somebody explain it to you. Knock and it will be open. Seek and you will find, but ask and it will be given. I'm trying to give to the world knowledge. And that's very dangerous. You know, I think, therefore I am. No, it's I think, therefore I am dangerous. <laughs> yeah. Real intelligent wisdom and knowledge is can be very dangerous. The government you live under is not interested in you finding out how they do what they do. You need to understand how the world works. And the basis for America, or I should say the basis for the white man's system, the system of the white man or the white man's culture is in Europe, North, East, West, and South. Incidentally, that's where we get the word news, North, East, West, and South, N-E-W-S, news. So anything that happens in North, East, West, or South is news, right? <laughs> but, but, but in Europe, uh, North, East, and West, and Southern Europe is all, be even before the Roman Empire was dominated by the white man, what we call the, the European white man. In that system we call Europe, for thousands of years, there was already a fully operational governmental system even before the Roman Empire. It was referred to the white man's system of government in, Rome, in, in, uh, in Europe was called the Druids. The Druids were the priests, the doctors, the lawyers, the teachers, they were religious leaders, they were everything. Anything that's uh, important in, in white man's culture it was a Druid running it. And so America is a Druid country. If you don't understand Druidism, you're not going to understand America. You're not going to understand any of it. But um, one of the most important symbols in the Druid system was a magic wand, like uh, today's uh, orchestra leaders with the magic wand. Harry the whole, Potter. Harry Potter with the magical wand. And, um, and, you know, and Merlin, the magician with the magic wand. Well, magic wands were always made out of the wood of a holly tree. It's made out of Hollywood. Okay, period. And that's why today we have something called Hollywood. You need to realize and understand what Hollywood is, how this world operates behind the scenes, who runs the banks, who, who gave you your educational institutions. There's a whole world of knowledge we have not been privy to know about. And I'm suggesting that the whole world needs to wake up the whole human race is being manip manipulated and exploited, and the rich are growing richer, the poor are growing poorer, and the reason why, as you said before, people have no power in America. Well, they don't have any power anywhere in the rest of the world, too. But the reason why they don't have any power in our country, which used to be a very powerful country, but the Americans don't have any power anymore. Why? Simple. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. And you have no knowledge. Well, the truth will also set you free. That's it. Know the truth and it will set you free. The Bible has, G has God saying in the Old Testament, my people are dying from a lack of knowledge. 
and one of the most important scriptures in the Old Testament, I think is probably the most important thing I've ever heard in the Bible ever, was a scripture that says, where there is no vision, the people perish. I'll say it again, it's a very powerful thought. Where there is no vision, the people perish. That's why our country is dying. That's why our country is falling apart. That's why the whole world is dying. It's because there is no vision. People have no idea in the world what's going on. They have no vision. They don't know where they've come from. They have no idea what they're doing now or where they're going. They have no idea. They're cattle. They're just like animals out on the Serengeti Plains, out there with their children, uh, eating grass, never realizing there are lions who are creeping up on the, on the herd. The lions are organized. They know what they're doing. It's the masses of animals out there on the Serengeti Plains that have no idea in the world the lions are planning dinner. And they're, they're sliding quietly in the grass, moving up on you. So that's where the human race is today. We are, as a human family on the earth today, are not able to protect ourselves from the predators. We're well, not able to do that. Sacrifice has been taking place since the Mayans. It took place with the Romans. That's it's right. taking place right now. Sheep will beware. That's right. We are not able to take care of The human race cannot take care of itself because there is no vision. And where there is no vision, the people perish. Vision means... You have insight. People have no insight. They don't know what's going on. No one's ever told them anything. All they've got is beer and pretzels and ball games. They have no knowledge. And knowledge is power. That's what I'm trying to do. That's what the whole essence of this show is all about. Just to tell people the truth. Know the truth and it will set you free. Well, speaking of uh, beer and perishing, I say let's get some food. Not a bad idea. Sounds Not a great. bad idea. Thanks for that, Jordan. I don't know about all of you hearing this, but listening to a little Jordan Maxwell every day is healthy for the mind. If you click on our Amazon link on our homepage and shop at Amazon, they will in turn support us. It won't cost you anything extra. We want to keep bringing you all this information. And remember, it's free. See you next time.